प्रेजेंट है ना वहाँ पे लेकिन उसका ऑडियो आई ना प्रेजेंट हेलो माइक ऑफ करो नहीं अभी नहीं जब वो चालू होगा तब ये ऑन रहेगा ये ऑन रहेगा तब वो बंद रहेगा ऐसा है होगा ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है ठीक है
different things. So uh, you will come to know what are the different opportunities in the career and how we, uh, you can go further for higher education. So LEDP is a National Academy of Defense Production. This is new for all of us. They will present you how you can uh, get admission in PGDM, Postgraduate Diploma in Management. Okay, so this today's program is uh, a blend of various activities. So we have uh, officials from NADP. First, we'll uh, install the Institute of Engineers chapter uh, by the uh, Dr. M. S. Professor, and then we'll have uh, uh, to another uh, expert uh, for the career opportunities. Okay. So with this, I thank you. And uh, now, uh, initially we installed the Institute of Engineers chapter. We have total 1468, 1468 registrations in Institute of Engineers uh, for all the branches, civil engineering, mechanical, electrical, uh, computers, and electronics and uh, science. Sorry, electronics and telecommunications. So, uh, officially, I request uh, Dr. M. S. Kalu sir to please uh, declare that the forum or chapter is installed and guide our students. Thank you. By branch wise, uh, enrollment of students in Institute of Engineers is uh, for civil engineering 290 registration, for CS 299, for electrical 294, for ETC 292, and mechanical 293. Huge registration is from our uh, college to this Institute of Engineers chapter. So we have five branches chapter. Uh, which is uh, the, uh, the uh, we have uh, received the certificate from chapter on 26, uh, 27th December 2022. So this is recent. Uh, we have joined for the Institute of Engineers. Thank you. So I request sir to please proceed. Principal of this institution, the other dignitaries on the dais, Dr. Kiran Atukar, in charge of this activity, my friend Dr. Nitin Dagore, and all sitting the faculty members, all of them are my friend, instead of testing time in the Indian and and my dear friends. It's a great privilege for me to be here with you on this occasion of opening of the student chapter of Institution of Engineers, India. The question must have arise in your mind. That why I am pleased. I said I am very pleased and glad to be here with you to open this chapter. But what is the reason for that? Many of you will be interested in knowing the reason. Otherwise, why should we spend our time? Everybody has got 24 hours a day. Now the requirements of society, requirements of family, the aspirations of all the students are increasing day by day. And we just have 24 hours in hand. How to manage these things? Isn't it? And again, we are celebrating this kind of thing, wasting our time. This question might have propped up. I don't know whether it is propped up in your mind or not. OK? 
get it. But I assume that this question is there in your mind. Okay. So I try to answer this question to my discussion. As a teacher, I'm a hard, hardcore teacher. When I was invited to the chief guest of this particular function, I would like to thank on my bed. I was trying to coordinate my thoughts, organize my thoughts about what should I speak about, what should I tell these students. These students means the students who are well versed with digital technology and they are having a guru better than us. The guru is Google, who is available 24 by 7. Seven days a week. I think it. So that was a big question in my mind. Okay. See, otherwise it would have been a sheer waste of time. I am not that, I must say that I am not happy with one thing. I am happy with one thing that almost around 300 students of each brand, they are members of the institution of engineers, isn't it? They have become. But when you look at the attendance, the attendance is not good. It means that the most of the students might have thought that this activity is of no use. And Google Guru is responsible for that. What teacher will come? What the speaker will tell us? Because, because we have a lot of information with to Google Guru. So because of that thought, most of the students might not have attended this lecture, I suppose. But there is a lot of difference between the information and knowledge and wisdom. Google Guru can provide you a lot of information. But to assimilate that information, to convert this information into knowledge and then to wisdom, you need to get in touch with people. Every person who will guide you, you can call it as Guru. I don't understand. You must have some interesting interesting in such organization. Some of them But to make it happen. You can have success in whatever area you have. You don't have to have anything. You don't have to convert this learning into knowledge. Right? And looking at the change in the value, one, lot of information, lot of knowledge is being very added to the table. Learning each and everything is not possible for the development. It is not a possible. Okay. And if you look at the job of our kids, the job of our kids is simply in their own day. But at the same time, the job of our kids is creating new and new jobs. So they have the same. The requirement of the industry is changing in their own day. Now, what is the requirement? In what area I should spend my time? I'm fully convinced. All this is in order that I'm fully convinced that the last of the teaching will not take to the day. This is just 20 to 20 percent of the world will be created by this class of teaching. Looking at the same place of the teaching. Okay. So, what is that? The levels, higher levels, in whatever sector, whatever area you choose. Right? It requires correct information of the related sectors. As I said, a lot of information is really added. Yet the expectations of the industry, the expectations of the society, from the students are 
increasing day by day. Even if we join one sector, reaching to the height will require continuous learning of different and different things. But what is that different thing which you will have to keep on learning even after passing this graduation? Who will tell you? And for that, certainly, please please tell you. The expert in that domain area, the expert sitting in planning commission, the expert from those who are at the helm of affairs, isn't it? The interaction with these people, a continuous interaction with these people will help you face what is required in the next five years, in the next ten years. Continuously, you will require to be in touch with these people, right? And then and then only you can plan your activities. You can learn newer and newer skills. Learning one skill, acquiring knowledge in one area is not sufficient nowadays. You have to keep on learning the things, isn't it? But what to learn? Because so many things are there in the market, in the system, isn't it? So to properly guide you, you will certainly require the help of these experts who are sitting at the helm of affairs, who knows better than you which area is going to take you in the right? right? And this is the platform. <laughs> Institution of Engineers is the platform which will help you in this direction. But when you think of different uh, chapters, but there into different branches. Nowadays, almost every screen of specialization has its own chapter. Institution of mechanical engineers, architects have got their own uh, organization. Chemical engineering is having another organization. Civil is having another organization separate. Even water sector is having another organization. Isn't it? But tell me, how many of you think So your interaction with the stalwarts is certainly necessary to guide you the appropriate, isn't it? So I'm very happy again, I repeat, that you have formed are going to form this is chapter of institution of engineers at your campus with such a number, good number. Okay. You must know that institution of engineers is a very, very old multidisciplinary professional organization. It was established in 1920. Other organizations, professional bodies are have taken birth like that. So, 100 years, we have recently celebrated 100 years of uh, establishment of institution of engineers. The institution of engineers have got more than 125 centers at national capitals and towns having academic and industrial exposure, like now. The Institution of Engineers publishes the peer reviewed journal, Journal of Institution of Engineers, for almost for all the disciplines. 15 disciplines are catered to this Institution of Engineers. To different series. This journal is peer reviewed, uh, peer reviewed, and in the Springer series is published. It is a good journal. As far as the guest houses are concerned, almost every center <laughs> institution is having guest houses. All the students, whenever they are in different cities, they can take advantage of this facility. If you are a member of institution of engineers, the facilities will be provided to you at a constitutional rate. Various activities, technical activities, symposiums, seminars, workshops, blah, blah, blah. These activities are organized by the various centers, right? You can be a part of these activities at constitutional rates. 
you can publish this papers at concessional rate all these publications are available in e form you can download these papers free of cost right so these are the benefits of becoming the member of institution of engineers i wish you all the best i would like to thank the organizers for uh, inviting me to the chief guest of this function i i was having so many questions in my mind and i was interested in having a word with you also the answers from the student discussion but looking at the galaxy of the experts so i will curtail my speak the speak and once again i thank you all i congratulate all the students i congratulate all the organizers our organizers for establishing this fantastic chapter I will request all the members, all the uh, all the student members, to take active part in all the activities conducted by Institution of Engineers last chapter. Organize different activities on this campus. Take advantage of different facilities provided by the Institution of Engineers. In addition to this, thing, I would like to share one thing: you can submit your proposals to Institution of Engineers for granting aid funding also. I think it is. You can visit the site of institution at here, ieindia.org. You can uh, have a lot of information of different activities and different provisions made by institutions for the faculty as well as the student uh, member. Once again, I would like to thank. Or, sabhi ko main ek bas kisne kaha hai? Ek share waisa chayar ko main hu nahi. Lekin fir bhi ek sabhi bachcho ko acha lagta hai. Kisne kaha hai ki bhai? सपना तो कितने लोग सपने देखते हैं यहाँ से कितने लोग सपने देखते हैं हर कोई सपना देखता मैं भी देखता हूँ आप भी देखते हैं तो उन्हीं सभी लोगों से मैं कहूंगा कि सिर्फ सपना देखने से काम होगा क्या सपना देखने से काम नहीं होगा दोस्तों किसने खूब कहा है मंजिल उन्हीं को मिलती है मंजिल आप बोलिए ना मंजिल उन्हीं को मिलती है जिनके सपनों में जान होती है जिनके सपनों में चार होती है लेकिन पंखों से कुछ नहीं होता दोस्तों पंख मींस ये सभी फैसिलिटीज राइट बीइंग अ मेंबर ऑफ दिस इंस्टीट्यूशन राइट पंखों से पंख है पंखों से कुछ नहीं होता दोस्तों हौसलों में उड़ान होती है हौसलों में उड़ान होती है हौसला भी थैंक यू थैंक यू Professor Hemant Sute, Director and Career Counselor, and Mr. Pradeep Meshram, Director of Education and Overseas Master. I would like to request our Principal, Dr. R. P. Borkar, to honor our guest with both. Thank you, Mr.
I request Levi General Manager Minan Ahmed Sir to please address the crowd. First, we will show you a small video uh, regarding the, the, the defense production environment or ecosystem in our country. How it is setting up. So, we will present a small video of here and how we not just pay attention to that. Then we will start with our presentation. Video. Third number. So, so, So just to give you a brief background of what exactly we will be talking in this video, uh, is the defense sector
Actually, happening. That was true for foreign countries as well. We are opening this sector. The government has, is creating many policies in order to open this sector. So, in view of that, uh, I will present to you what are the different opportunities that is coming in the sector and how this post fit in and what will be the uh, good thing for you in order if you choose to join this post. So, uh, please move on to the next slide. When you, when you look at the growth, the growth of the defense manufacturing sector in India, uh, defense and aerospace sector is one of the important pillars or the focus area for the Arnagar Bharat that is a flagship program of this government. Uh, the government aims to achieve a turnover of US dollar 25 billion, including exports of US dollar 5 billion in aerospace and defense goods and services by 2025. And that's a very ambitious figure to achieve. India is the third largest military spender in the world and its defense budget around the uh, to 1.15% of the country's total GDP. And yesterday only the budget was presented uh, two days back and we saw that the defense again got a larger allocation, much larger than last year. The world military spending, as per the CIPRI report, CIPRI is an institute that does this, conducts this research in the area of defense. So it publishes a report and as per the CIPRI report, the world military spending has cost US dollar 2 trillion for the first time in 2021. And the digital growth was more than 12%. So we are not only spending more in defense, the world over the trend is that they are spending more and more in defense. So that sector is going very fast. And over next five to seven years, the government of India plans to spend around US dollar 130 billion for fleet modernization across all the armed services that includes your Air Force, Army and and recently, as I was telling, uh, before two days back, uh, in PM budget 2023-24, US dollar 72.6 billion has been allocated to Ministry of Defense. And also, if you look at the share of domestic capital procurement in defense, it has been enhanced from 64% in FY21-22 to 68% in 22-23. So we see that the imports in defense are reducing and we are creating more and more domestic capacity. Next, please. And what are the growth levels in this area? In order to promote the defense manufacturing in India, dedicated defense industrial corridors in Tamil Nadu as well as Uttar Pradesh has been set up. And the government is creating a robust ecosystem in order to enhance the defense production in the uh, country with many supportive policies. One such policy is that Ministry of Defense has notified 310 defense equipment that is to be manufactured locally. Earlier, these was, uh, these, uh, most of these were uh, imported from outside. Now, it has been mandated that it needs to be uh, manufactured locally and many new private firms, MSME firms are coming up with new ideas. Uh, FDI in defense sector has been enhanced up to 74% through automatic route and 100% by government route in order to promote the defense export. And uh, another thing is this IDEX and I would like to uh, lay a focus on this since you are a student. Uh, you must Google and see what exactly that is IDEX. Uh, it's a platform that has been created by the Ministry of Defense where new and innovative uh, problems are posted and solutions are seen. And uh, as a student also, you can, uh, if, if you can go through the list and you see that some of the problems suits you, 
for your your understanding or your skills you can try to find a solution and you can then contact uh, you post your solution there uh, government has a scheme of providing funding for that funding support for that and uh, they also have a incubation cell where they support these kinds of ideas and many new startup firms are coming up through this idex platform and it is it, again a flexi program of ministry of defense and it was recently awarded by our prime minister uh, defense import has reduced from 46% to 36% of overall expenditure from 1819 to 2021 and defense export uh, from us bar now uh, has grown by 334% in last 5 years and now india is exporting to 75 countries and this is the uh, graph which is showing how exports have been increasing in crore and it has now crossed 13000 crore and government has set a target of inr 1.7 lakh crore of defense production by 2025 which will have a export component of 35000 so this is an enormous amount of money all we are talking about next <coughs> uh this is again comes from the idex what i was talking about uh, india has around 194 defense tech startup building innovation innovative tech solution and most of these have come through this idex platform in up defense industrial corridor has signed 69 mous with industry with a potential investment of 10000 crores and again tamil nadu defense corridor has a range investment worth of 11000 crores to various mous to various private industries now all these trends in the area of defense production are testimony they are saying that the defense production sector in our country is going it's going tremendously and lot of opportunities are going to be created now we identify the government identifies that these these areas a lot of opportunities will be created and it was decided to come up with a course in order to cater to the rising opportunities in that area so we have planned we were asked as nndp were asked to formulate such course we designed and it was it got approved and uh, then we applied for aict approval after the uh, we got the that <coughs> approval we are launching the course with this time so we have planned that course uh, by mixing uh, that will be a blend of general management course and some of the courses from defense side that will be required in new course are uh, blended with it so i will uh, tell you more detail about the course next right? So NDP, as everyone, as we also saw in the video, is a premier central training institute organized by DOPNT in the field of defense. So in India, we have various central civil services. Indian Ordnance Safety Service is one of the civil service, and our training academy is uh, the National Academy of Defense Production. So this NDP earlier used to train only officers of Indian Ordnance Safety Service and other related cadres. But now, with opening up of the defense sector, the facilities in NDP are also being opened to all. And uh, in that scheme of things, this course has been going. So we have spent more than uh, we have been in this business for more than 200 years, and we have spent more than 20,000 officers of the year cadre. Next, please. So these are some of the facilities that we saw in the year. Please, please, next, next, next. So technical exhibit center. Next, please. Next, next. So next, please. So these are some of the visits in our academy we had. We had the Chief Pranam Mukherjee, who was the then Defence Minister, visited our academy. Uh, C. K. Antony, who was the then Defence Minister, visited, and C. Pallav Raju, who was M. O. S. Minister, Defence, who who also visited. So so this is a two-year fully residential uh, course, E. I. C. T. approved. Uh, the sponsor candidates will have to spend uh, one and a half year. And uh, six months or one semester, they will go back to their respective places, and they will do a capstone project to their respective places. The professors who will be coming directly to us, uh, they will have been there in the campus for two full years. So next, please. So this is syllabus as a plan. Uh, we we have blended the management courses along with the different courses. As you see, in first year we have introduction to security studies. Next. So in second year we have added optional of AI in defense, defense acquisition, offset management, strategy management, defense production. Next, uh, in third semester global security, R&D management, defense procurement, operational research, defense offset. These are again big area in defense. Next, so the course is open to all as, as per AI CT eligibility norms. Uh, minimum uh, qualification is three years bachelor degree in any stream. This minimum fifty percent mark for general and forty five percent for reserve candidates. The government policy of reservation will follow as it is, and the sponsor candidates are also will also be enrolled in this course from Army, Air Force, Navy, and also executives from various different production sectors. They will be enrolled in this course to respond to it. Next, 
Our mode of selection is CAT score. If you do not have a valid CAT score, then you will have to appear for a test conducted by NAD. And then there will be a general process of group discussion and interview. Our final merit list will be based on several other criteria. Uh, you can visit our website for more details. Next. So the fee is 3.5 lakhs for one year, so that will be 7 lakhs for two years. And the hostel and food are optional. Next. Uh, we have, since we are in defense production area uh, for more than 200 years, so we have tied up with very uh, many of the defense industries. Uh, our own ordnance factories, we have 41 ordnance factories across the country. So we are in process of finding more and more MOUs with even the private sector industries also, so that the students can get live exposure to the industry, what exactly the power exactly the production is done, how the deals are negotiated, how the procurement is done, how the conflict resolution and negotiation in foreign procurement is done in Japan. And uh, again, the placement support as uh, in every other college, we have a TCU and placement support is provided. Next. So, thank you. Contact us uh, on this uh, website. You can note down our phone number, email ID. And I urge you all to visit to our uh, website and see, search more, look more about this, uh, try to explore it. Um, how the opportunities will be created, be satisfied. If you feel like joining this course, you are most welcome. And it's also requested to spread the word. If you feel that it will be more beneficial to some other person, just spread the word uh, so that get good and smart managers for our defense production. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any quick questions or doubts we can address, otherwise we are coming for the time. Yeah. Quick one or two questions from any participants. So the intake is 60 uh, per year. So a sponsor, a sponsor seats are, are yet under consideration, around 20% years decided, but that will be decided after the all the application forms are received based on the response. Normally, the lateral system, yeah. the lateral system is 20%. So, so that's why. So, so that's why. And 20% is as of now. Yes, yeah, so the has told that it, it, it depends on you. They have given a recommended three figures, but it depends on our economic council how they decide to. Also, based on the response and the direction of what we respond. So, so, no question. Yes, sir. Sure, yeah. sure. So, just visit our website, you will get more information. Just try to explore it. See how more different opportunities are coming up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your kind words. Now, I would like to give a brief introduction of Professor Heman Sutte. Mr. Heman Sutte is a passionate educator, eminent career designer, and director of the courses, counselors, and careers educational consultants. With an experience of more than 35 years, he has been guiding students to various top ranked universities throughout the world. Working for 33 years with Air India, Professor Sute has traveled all across the world. He has personally visited the topmost ranked universities in UK, USA, Canada, and has been strongly involved in the education field. Due to his encouragement and counseling, both his wife and son have completed degrees from the UK. I request Professor Sute to please address the crowd. His son is also here. I have been allotted 30 minutes. Yeah, both of us are there, two of us are there. So 50 minutes come to my town and 50 minutes each day. Not more than that. Okay. Honorable Dr. Devas Kumar, a good friend of mine. Dignitaries on this dais, faculties who are sitting across here, and my dear friends. I am basically uh, not related to the uh, field of education. I was an aviator, I was in aviation. I was in Air India for almost 33 years. I was cabin crew with Air India. That job involved me to travel throughout the world, throughout my life. So 
So that was my story. And while doing my aviation, while flying from one country to another country, it gave me an opportunity to approach to all best of the best institutions of the world, which was my passion. I visited almost all the universities. You name the university and I have visited. That is out of my passion. And every day I was paying for it. I was not paying for it. So out of that, I have developed a habit of knowing more about education. Started helping the students who wanted to go from India to study abroad. That was 33 years ago. So till today, 33 years ago, from till today, I mean, I have, I must have the help around 1,000 students to go and pursue their education. So basically, uh, I'll not make it very complicated. I'll just tell you three things which you will have to look for if you really want to go and study abroad. There are three C's. Like my company is called as Courses, Counselors and uh, Courses, Counselors and Careers. My three C's are Counselor, the Counselor who will be counseling you. The country is where you should be going. And the currency, meaning the money, where you get the money from. The biggest stumbling block is the money. Where you get the money from? Because it involves a uh, heavy amount of money. For example, if you are going to study in Colombia, uh, it will require you at least five and a half crore rupees. If you listen to me very patiently, I'll tell you where to get that one and a half crore rupees. If you are going to study to Canada, UK, you require 50 lakh rupees, and maximum is one and a half crore rupees. I'll tell you how to get that money. So first, briefly, I'll tell you the country. Now, you must have heard that many of your friends, or friends' friends, or friends' friends, they are going to certain countries, like they are going to Canada, or they are going to A, or B, or C country, and you also want to go. According to me, I mean, the life which I have seen so far, according to me, the country number one to go so far is only U.S. And everybody can go to U.S. Everybody can go to U.S. U.S.A. doesn't stop you. I mean, till today, see, when I was working with Air India, I used to talk with the students who used to travel on my flight. Uh, say, on an average, the students used to fly with me. Uh, the aircraft was 747-400, so big aircraft where I used to carry those students. In one aircraft, 450 students used to travel at one time. So it means that at least 5,000 students are going every year to study from just one port in Mumbai. So till today, uh, students are going in boards to America. Please remember one thing that everybody can go to America to study. To study. Everybody can go to America to study. If not America, then which is the other country you can go to study? Obviously, the entire Europe. Very entire Europe. Mostly your UK or then Canada. Then worse than worse, you cannot go anywhere, go to Australia. That is the way I look at the world. So those are the countries. Remember, America always number one country and you can go America, you can go to America with whatever qualification you have right now. There is nothing called as good profile or bad profile. Good profile, bad profile. When you go to these counselors, their number one duty is to tell you that your profile is not good. That is the number one duty. That you are even if you got 80 percent, 80 plus. For me, anything more than second uh, around 60 percent is good for me. 60 plus. You can make your career. But anybody getting 90 percent marks, marks, when they go to this uh, counselors, the counselors point blank tell you that uh, your profile is not good. What is a good profile? I am studying so hard, eight semesters, flogging day in out, getting all my practical submissions done at time. What should be my profile? And you are saying yeah, my profile is not good. So anything um, uh, better than uh, is more than seven CGP is good profile. Please remember with seven seven CGP also you can go to America. So that is country America. Second is counselor. This gentleman who wherever you go and he's sitting there, that counselor. What is the qualification of the counselor? Me as a counselor, I can say authoritatively that I have seen the entire world. I have seen all the universities. I know their admission processes. Uh, pre your internet area. Pre internet area means we used to carry the application form. Now it's very easy now. You can sit on the computer and just send your application form. So I know that so well from since so many years. So just know the qualification of the counselor because the counselor is the one who is going to make or break your life. Make or break your life. I have known so many examples where as students with best of the best profile have gone to them and they are rotting in some. Uh, country where they, they are not required to be. So mind well, please remember, ask the counselor how much they have studied, see their background, and then, then you can deal with them. Third thing is currency. Currency. Who will give you money? Who will give you money? Normally, where the money comes from? Normally, where the money comes from? Parents. If not parents, there is their PF. 
If not PPF, their house. If not their higher house, bank. That is a normal situation. But you will need not to worry at all. Please, I will tell you that money is available in abundance. Abundance. There is no ceiling on that. Supposing you want to go to study in MIT, MIT costs you around two crore rupees to study. I'll get you that money. Only show me your caliber. Just listen to me. Do it. Do the thing rightly, rightfully. Which are the factors important for you to get admission in the university? Uh, which are the factors? There are six factors important. The number one factor which is important is uh, I tell you the six factors which are important. Judge, uh, just judge yourself with those factors. Number one factor is your academics. Academic means whatever you have studied in your eighth semester. Those academics. Let it be whatever. I cannot correct that academics. Don't worry about that. Even if it is six, seven, eight, nine, indicate, don't worry about that. Second thing is now understand this. Second thing is the most important thing is your GRE and TOEFL examination. GRE and TOEFL is the examination which you have studied in your SSC, 10th standard. GRE TOEFL, your 10th standard quant. 10th standard English and again 10th standard English. Here it often examination is in three parts. One part is your quant, which you have already done your 10th standard, where you must have got uh, 90 marks in, uh, in uh, your in, uh, in mathematics. Second part is English and third part is also English. So you are going to get admission on the basis of a subject which you have already studied. Only thing is that you will have to revise that subject. So remember, your GRE and TOEFL examination is going to make or break your life. Many universities will tell you GRE is not required. It means that university is not important. Many of the university will tell you, many of the counselors will tell you that GRE is the work. No. All best of the best colleges will ask you for the GRE and topic. And uh, then after that, they will be asking for your LOR given by your uh, learned professors, letter of recommendation. Everybody's letter of recommendation is very, very important. So please read them nicely. You know, all the teachers, they will give the letter of recommendation. Next thing is your statement of purpose. What is the purpose of you pursuing your course? So that statement of purpose is very much important. Next point is that when you are applying, when you are applying, and last thing is that your ethnicity, we are Asians. They welcome Asians because Asians, by this time, America know how the Asians or Indians work. So this six points, Maybe the one point which is the uh, academics may not be in your favor, but five points are still in our favor. We can correct them. So please remember this. This subject is very long subject. I can talk on this subject for hours together. But um, uh, just, just look at this presentation. After this presentation is over, we'll give you our card and uh, you can get in touch with us. Thank you very much for listening to me so patiently. And uh, journey begins here to go to a study, a destination where you are already, uh, already cherishing. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for your kind words. I request Mr. Nagin Sudhir to please say a few words. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Audible at the back? Yeah. Are you hearing? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Dr. Borkas, sir. Teachers, uh, teacher dignitaries, and all these students for uh, giving me this opportunity for being the audience, for being here to listen to me. I'll be very brief, um, just a little bit about myself. So, I have completed my graduation from England. I was there for five years and my degree in economics. And uh, ever since I completed that, I've been involved in this career counseling, my father. Basically, this entire process of students who want to study abroad, you know, what are the nitty gritty? This we've been covering for the past, for me, I would say the past 10 years. And then now the basic opportunity we are talking about is that if there is a student who wishes to avail this opportunity to study with respect to overseas education, if you want to study abroad, please don't fall into that trap of, you know, taking this massive loan of 50, 60, 70, X amount of money. Even if you have that money, Please save it with you, you know, buy some property or whatever. I will tell you a much more different way as to how you can go and how you can study and how you can fund your expense. So, <clears throat> my uh, presentation is basically talking about the students who wish to study abroad for the next year, right? For 2024. So, if there are students, I guess you might be in the final year or something. 
after you complete your degree what are the basic steps what are the stages you need to go through so that you can secure your admission so we start with the very first stage so there are some very very basic examinations you have to undergo you see the first two exams on the left it says TOEFL and on the right it says IELTS these are very basic english proficiency exams now why we have to take this is because we are coming from india india is not a native english speaking country that means majority of the people they don't have english as a mother tongue but if you are going to the topmost country as sir mentioned usa or uk you need to show your english proficiency very very simple exam this is basically syllabus related to your 10th standard english listening reading writing speaking that is compulsory and then if you see below that it says gre graduate record examination that is for the science students if you are going into the stem field science technology engineering mathematics in that field you will have to take this examination for usa right gre exam gmat exam right next to it that is for finance related courses if you want to do mba or something in one of the top most university those two exams are dependent on your background but everybody has to go to tofel and iel okay that is the first thing as sir spoke a little bit you know the number one destination if you see if you read in the news look at any dignitary or if you have you know any top most ceos they've all come from usa why so if you see in terms of this us ranking which is a impartial ranking for all the universities in the world i'll give you a hint the top most indian college in that line, ranking is iit bombay which is ninth 170 something okay if you look at top 100 top 50 ranking 32% of the universities are from us so again this is mit chicago all the ivy league universities etc etc then you have uk then you have australia canada singapore hong kong you know other universities but majority of where we recommend our students to go and study please try for usa then after that you see you know based on your background now i just made a short list of the universities once you decided the country which university you are going to select now you see the names right in the center i have put imperial college london that is number 7th in the world above that is university college london ucl that is number 8 Below that, Penn stands for University of Pennsylvania, University of California, Berkeley, Cornell University, that's Ivy League, University of Edinburgh. On the right hand side, the red one is Chicago. Below that, Manchester, Johns Hopkins, Northwestern. Now, see, I'm not selecting this as random. This is where our council students have gotten the offer letters, and this is where they are currently studying. That too, on full scholarship. I'll just give you an idea. Ivy League universities, if you say, for example, University of Chicago, the one year fee is eighty thousand dollars. right one year fee and expense is extra all of that would be covered by the scholarship and these are the top most ranked universities in the world this is where even the local students find it hard to get in this is where we are aiming for the students this is where you should aspire to study so these are the universities where our students are studying then based on that based on your background you can see which course is appropriate for you what are the requirements what are the modules you will be studying what are the opportunities after completing this all of this information we can provide you the most important question sir so if my fees are covered then does it mean i don't have to spend anything so there are certain expenses you have to incur you know in the initial stage which also would be refunded back to you later you can get to us for the details now what are the basic expenses so like i said you have your gre tofel exam so there is a cost for that exam which you have to pay online when you apply to university some of them have a certain amount of application fee which you have to again pay to them directly your university will provide you a transcript which is basically just your mark sheet in a different format so that might cost you a certain amount then if you get a offer letter from the university if they say that please join us they might ask you that to confirm your admission please pay a deposit of say 1000 dollars or 2000 dollars so that might be another cost some universities ask you that if you have a degree from india please get it evaluated by an independent regulator so you might have to send the sealed copy transcript to usa or canada that might cost you something then of course once you're finally ready to go you know the basic expenses of your visa your flight ticket you know health insurance very very important and then of course you know for your emergency for your survival you need to take some money with you you know in case if there is some sort of unforeseen expenditure now the fears which students come to me you know i have read with i don't even remember how many students a lot of them basically the number one question is that sir we were not aware about this you know this is why we take this opportunity to come and address you as much as possible to tell you to guide you to inform you okay talking about the expense i have just covered the expense see the major 
question in the student mind is that sir what about the fees fees for that we have a scholarship for each and every student all categories of students that is our main goal because that is why i am coming and telling you and then finally so if the student is ready sir okay i am willing to undergo this process so what is the preparation what is the you know procedure so for that we have our year long you know program where we take care of all these things in house like how to prepare for the exam what documents you need how to apply you know and each and everything in terms of you know application then after you get the application then with respect to the scholarships and then once you go there sir what about my visa ticket etc etc each and everything we would be informing now last but not the least you know i have highlighted all this so does that mean it is easy as sir mentioned you know it is easy but in the sense that you got to get things done at the right time you know deadlines are very very important just like for any college you know you need to get things done if somebody says please do this by this much time you know if you can manage that then it is very very simple right it is very systematic 90% what i have highlighted over there 90% is basically the effort which the students have to put see i am just a counselor i will tell you please do this please do that etc you know i have already gone there it's not me who's going to study it's a question of your future so majority of the effort if i have students who are you know relentless who are persistent who are focused then it is not impossible at all right but in the end the onus is on you to create your own future last but not the least so if you want to get in touch with us i'll just put in our contact details you can take a picture or please i think we'll be sharing some more of our pamphlets uh, uh, our office is right here in survey nagar if you not too far so you can please come and visit you know whether you're ready to study abroad whether you're not ready to or study or you just want some information whatever it is so please come have a chat and remember don't make decisions just because i tell you to do so you know always you must be clear in your own mind right is this correct get it verified get all the information and then finally make the best decision what is right for your people right so thank you all of you it was a great audience thank you sir all the best thank you sir now i would like to give a brief introduction of mr pradeep meshram pradeep meshram his company name is eduvi course is nagpur they are into offering affordable foreign educational opportunities leading to permanent residence in european countries they offer opportunities for all streams and for all levels that is bsc and pg he has done btech from iit bombay in mechanical engineering and has been a faculty at many educational institutes including government polytechnic and as director iilm business school he is the founder president of vidarbha stock exchange nj association he looks forward to meeting young people and enjoy guiding them to build international career i request uh i request to please show the world thank good afternoon all of you am i audible can you listen to me yeah uh, dignitary on the dais uh, professor bosser the principal and uh, all my friends faculty and students today we are uh, assembled here to interact in a session in which we are looking forward i think all of you are from final year <laughs> mixed crowd mixed crowd okay. so final year students are aspiring to build their careers as they are finishing their studentship now you are on the verge of completing your graduation and looking forward to uh, build your careers in some way or the other so there may be you know some options in front of you in the form of maybe a job opportunity maybe a, a further education in india uh, for which maybe you will have to take gate examination or uh, some other cat examinations and so on uh, to do your uh, uh, post graduation or masters program 
here in India. Now, uh, Indian scenario is not uh, hidden from anybody as far as career opportunities for today's generation are concerned. Uh, with a lot of automation and a uh, uh, lot of outsourcing, uh, the opportunities uh, in the engineering sector, per se, uh, have dwindled to a large extent. So as we look at the Indian opportunities, uh, which are diminishing day by day, we also have to open our minds uh, to opportunities which are outside India. We say foreign or abroad. Right? We have to uh, very seriously look for opportunities which may come if you leave India, if you go out of India. And we say foreign. So one has to really look for this because the situation has arrived when the opportunities in India are diminishing day by day. Next, please. So basically, our company name is Edureach Overseas. We are an Apple based company. And uh, we have uh, one thing in mind that we want to uh, offer or make you aware about opportunities which are affordable. Affordable is something which we constantly hammer all the time. That is within your capacity, financial capacity. And we offer complete transparent and trustworthy service uh, to all our clients. And uh, uh, we uprightly, very clearly tell you whether you are eligible, whether you should go ahead uh, with the process or not. And we also uh, do the entire process um, with a clear mind, in not only orally, but also on paper. We put an agreement uh, as to what are our responsibilities, what are students' responsibilities and uh, how the process will go on and in, in what situation who will be held responsible and who will not be held responsible. So it is not only oral, it is put on paper and it is a legal document that we sign in every time. Okay, uh, as I have already told you that uh, there are lesser number of job opportunities due to automation and outsourcing. There is a huge competition because India uh, uh, demographically is a young country. Younger population is there in large number and therefore the opportunities are per capita you can say are lesser. And uh, India always the life is stressful. Whether you have money or whether you don't have money. The, uh, since the systems are not there, it's very chaotic society and therefore life is very stressful. And uh, uh, financial gains, today's situation, if you see what 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 is the government or what is the uh, uh, you know society telling us that uh, you know you can go into gig economy, that you can become a quickly delivery boy, you can become a you know flip card delivery boy, you can become a Ola cab driver and so on. The, the, the government indirectly is saying that you know you can get into job opportunities of this kind. But these kind of jobs for most of you are not going to be like careers. You cannot look upon them as careers. We see a lot of people doing them, they are getting some money, they are surviving, but they may be good for only small time survival, not a career option. Next please. Right, so generally when we talk of foreign education or going abroad as uh, Dr. Sute has already told us that most of the people see or have, have heard about people having gone to US, UK, Canada, Australia and all these countries. Most of the time we talk about uh, uh, these countries and these universities. Now uh, education in these countries is pretty expensive, 
and uh, for the middle class student, of course, now, now the middle class students can go to Prof. Sute and get the financial solution for these uh, countries as well. But students who, who, who have no knowledge uh, and who go to the usual consultant will be facing this uh, challenge of, uh, you know, uh, spending 50, 60 lakhs, maybe of a crore of rupees and uh, going to universities. And that two universities which are not, uh, not so good, I should say, in simple terms. There are, there are good universities in every country, there are bad universities in every country. So through the usual or the traditional consultants, maybe you will end up in some rotten university, spending 1.5 crores and ending with nothing in the future. So, so uh, these are, this is a scenario that, uh, you know, people are talking about only US, UK, Canada, Australia. And uh, the consultants would uh, suggest you universities which offer them the consultants, the maximum incentives or commission. And uh, at the end of the day, you may end up into a, an obscure college. Some of the courses offered are maybe 16 months or 18 months or maybe a one year four master's program, which uh, may not be acceptable universally and all the times to come. Normally, a postgraduate or a master's program should be a two years program, which, normal, which uh, uh, some of these universities or standalone colleges offer in order to attract the students they will offer you one year course one and a half year course enticing you to say that yes the fees is you know same or expenses are same so let me go for a short term program next please so we are basically uh, apart from these countries we are talking about european countries where uh, you know uh, europe is a continent and it constitutes 27 countries and uh, the kind of visa that you get is a Schengen visa, which allows you to uh, travel to all the 27 countries and explore career opportunities after your education. Post study, you can explore career opportunities in all the 27 countries. This, this is a uh, you know spectrum of countries, right from Scandinavian countries to Central European and to the ex Russian proxy. So some of them are extremely uh, wealthy countries, uh, some of them are not so wealthy countries, but most of the countries have got lesser population and therefore uh, uh, manpower requirement, people requirement is there obviously. I should underline that uh, you should possess the right kind of skills uh, uh, to get those opportunities. And the purpose of going for education in these countries is to get those right kind of kids uh, going into those countries. Right, benefits of poor uh, education in Europe is that tuition fees are low and uh, you can study in English medium. A lot of these universities in these countries have started English short program and uh, you can explore the whole continent and quality of education. Normally we are sending students to public universities, which means the government universities and therefore, the quality of education is of the of a very high standard. Uh, then uh, there are a wide range of education offers, uh, options, and so on. Uh, right. Now, among the uh, countries, uh, European countries, the best country that we are suggesting, uh, the best option we are suggesting, as far as students are concerned, is Italy, because uh, Italy. Uh, uh, these are the best, uh, you know, about Italy, a uh, lot of people don't know. Uh, so, it, I just uh, quickly run through what is Italy because people generally do not know much about Italy. Italy is the seventh uh, largest economy. It is eighth most industrialized nation in the world. Uh, it is a member of G7, G20. There are about 600 Italian companies uh, who have got presence in India. So, if you look at a larger uh, picture, then there will be a lot of Italian companies who are doing business in India. They have presence in India. And uh, from the energy efficiency, it is the second best uh, country. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, for higher studies, it is the biggest uh, global destination. Now, it is a part of the European Union, and the students get Schengen visa, which allows you to look for career opportunities post study. And uh, we have got English short program. There is no requirement of any GRE GMAT as far as Italian universities are concerned. 
there is no requirement of CRE and GMAT. And uh, the education is completely free. That uh, there is no tuition fee charged. And on the top of that, you get scholarship to cover your living expenses. The scholarship till last year was 5,200 euros, and they have raised it now to 7,000 euros. So 7,000 euros you will get into your account, and uh, you have to manage your living expenses. That means accommodation and food and other uh, country expenses. You will have to manage from this 7,000 euros. And uh, uh, this particular facility of uh, zero tuition fees and scholarship is available only in public universities. Now, these public universities are very highly uh, ranked on the QS rankings and uh, they have been in existence for a long time. Some of the universities are as old as 800 years old or 1000 years old. So, with that consistency, they have existed for so long and uh, their uh, uh, ranking is also pretty high. Now, when you go to uh, a university in uh, Europe, uh, they have got what is called as Erasmus program. The European Union has come to an understanding between the countries and the universities that uh, you can go for an exchange program. Like you have gone to an Italian university, you can do one semester uh, out of your four semesters. Uh, you can do maybe in Germany, maybe in France, maybe in Netherlands, any of the 27 countries, you can go for an exchange program. The entire expenditure for that will be borne by the host university, that is the Italian university will bear uh, the expenses for that Erasmus program. So, you get exposure of one more country and one more university. So, that is an advantage. You can utilize this also uh, if you think of going to uh, Italian university. Uh, you can transfer credits from one, one university to another. Uh, that is also possible. Now, some of the uh, universities in Italy, which are uh, uh, ranked on the QS rankings, uh, uh, they, they are not maybe as high as the uh, US universities as Dr. Sute said, but uh, they are uh, world-class universities. For example, University of Polini, Politecnico di uh, Milano, actually it is called Politecnico di Milano. It is ranked 139 uh, overall which is even better than IIT Bombay, as uh, he has mentioned, 172 IIT Bombay. So 139 uh, is the overall ranking for Politecnico di Milano. As far as engineering is concerned, it is ranked 13 uh, on the QS rankings in engineering study. So similarly, all these universities, University of Bologna is a 1200 years old university, University of Sapienza is a 800 years old university. So these are some of the uh, world-class universities where uh, you can go and study for free. Right? Uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, apart from Italy, also there are other countries also in Europe, for example, Germany, uh, you have free education, public universities, but living expenses you have to cover uh, on your own. You have to make, make your own arrangement. There are other countries like Denmark, Finland, uh, a lot of countries are there, 27 countries are there, where free education is not there, but less less expensive uh, education is there and uh, you can definitely look for uh, these opportunities. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any queries, maybe uh, you can ask me. I would be more than happy to answer them. Any questions regarding today's program? Any questions to all of them? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
by government of India and government of Maharashtra. And even other scholarships are there. Yes, about the scholarship fees. There are 300 scholarships available right now. Fully funded scholarships. Out of the 300, 125 scholarships are given by government of Maharashtra, Ministers of Social Welfare and Justice. Government of Maharashtra is more generous. See, many a times we call our government, but government by default does so many good things. Up. And I'm following it very, very close. Government of Maharashtra, now this is for every member who is sitting in this auditorium, is the government of Maharashtra gives scholarship to shell caste, shell tribe, OBC, and open category. I repeat again, government of Maharashtra gives scholarship to open category, OBC category, scheduled tribe category, and scheduled caste category. Out of all this, all this, the two scholarships, one is for OBC, and one is for open category, were limited till last year. The scholarship, the number of scholarships, is a given. Oh, there were only 10 scholarships for OBC, but uh, we are a little social activists also, so we have pressurized certain elements who are responsible to get this uh, scholarship increase. So by speaking to political something, the scholarship for OBC have risen from 10 to 50. 50 students, 50 students from OBC category can go on fully funded scholarship. Yeah. What do you mean by fully funded, sir? Uh, full fee. Whether 60,000, 70,000, if you go to MIT to grow, I'll give you the process. Let me get the process. I have this year, this year I have got 51 scholarships worth 70 crore rupees. And out of those 51 scholarships, around 35 scholarships are only taken by the students who belong to this four districts. Nagpur, Chandrapur, Mandara, and Bodhi. Right. Yeah. All the names are mentioned in the in the uh, law. So for OBC, the scholarship is risen from 10 to 50. Then there was a minister called as I mean, there is no, nothing wrong with saying that because this, this is all good work done by them. So there was a minister called as eminent minister, Mr. Vadetiwa. Then certain people went approach to him saying that the, the scholarships are very less than scholarships to the big mass of students. So he said, okay, I'll declare 100 scholarships. So he declared his 100 scholarships. But unfortunately, he had to go away from the ministry. Another government came in. And uh, people again approached to this new government and they were uh, good enough to say, yes, okay, we will give 50 scholarships. So when you are do going, uh, doing good things and you reach, I'm not advocating in government, anybody, but this is the beautiful things happening around us. You must know. So the number of scholarships for OBC is different. And last year, you will not believe my friends, people who were not even imagining of getting scholarship, they got scholarship. But Sagreja Sagre gave a business management circuit. Sagre Yogya Sangre Shiklele Vidyasya. And Kipitari Futuristic Coding Institute. Sagreja Sagre gave a business management circuit. 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 Sagreja Sagre gave a business management Government ordinance. And Dusra second scholarship uh, were for uh, open category. Uh, initially, the uh, scholarship for open category were only 20 initially when they started two years ago. Now it has been risen to 40. It has been risen to 40. So this two scholarship, I'm very, very uh, I'm vigorously working on it. I go throughout the Maharashtra from one city to another city just to educate people that yes, there are scholarships available. And there are obviously there are scholarships for scheduled tribal. There are 10 scholarships. But the unfortunate thing is that nobody is taking the scholarship. Ten scholarships are there. That scholarships are available for uh, post the undergraduate also. Maravicha Nantar that scholarship, but nobody is taking it. I, I must have enrolled at least 20 students in my curriculum, but nobody is finishing it completely. But I'm not I have not lost now this year. I have such a thing. So there are ten scholarships. And there are scholarships for schedule tribe, a schedule class. The, the, so total number of scholarships are 300 scholarships. What do we exactly spend? I want to keep people to come together like this. Because Malay scholarship. So this is Nirvedhi Sangeet like you have to pay for the price. 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 You have to pay for the accommodation. And you have to pay for the price. But the government scholarship is sanctioned. But you have to pay for the price. You have to pay for the price. And you have to pay for the price. And you will not believe this scholarship is very transparent. I am closely following this scholarship. For schedule class for almost 10 or 15 years, you get the money. 
हल्ले सांगते की फॉल्टर तुम्ही चूक केली तुम्हाला नाही मिळत सगळ्या स्वरचूक मिळतात कोणा मिनिस्टरचा फोन नाही पाहिजे कोणाचा फोन नाही पाहिजे कोणाची ओळखी नाही पाहिजे यू हॅव टू डू द थिंग राईटली इट विल टेल यू हाऊ टू डू इट राईटली ऑब्झर्व ऑल द रुल्स अँड रेग्युलेशन अँड यू गेट दिस कॉलेज तो फुल्ली फंडेड स्कॉलरशिप आहे मी सांगतो म्हणून इट इज ऑन गव्हर्नमेंट डोमेन कोण कोण देतं स्कॉमर्स स्कॉलरशिप शेवटचं सांगतो शेड्यूल कास्टची स्कॉलरशिप देते सामाजिक सोशल डेव्हलपमेंट अँड नाही शेड्यूल ट्राईबची स्कॉलरशिप आदिवासी विकास मंडळ म्हणतात देते ओबीसीची स्कॉलरशिप ओबीसी मिनिस्ट्री देते आणि ते देते आणि तुमची ओपनची स्कॉलरशिप डायरेक्टर ऑफ टेक्निकल दिस इज यू कॅन गो ऑन दर वेबसाईट यू सी दॅट पण त्याचं प्रिपरेशन जे लागतं कसं करायचं ते आम्ही तुम्हाला क्रायटेरिया एकच आहे जसं म्हणतात बोरकर तर क्यू एस रँकिंग टॉप मोस्ट पाहिजे जे आम्ही मिळवली आता ते तुम्हाला ते दाखवतील याच्यामध्ये माझे जेवढे स्टुडंट आहेत सगळ्यांची क्यू एस रँकिंग टॉप मोस्ट रँकिंग इज सेव्हन सेव्हन टू पन्नास मध्ये आहे सेव्हन टू फिफ्टी आणि तुम्ही सगळे सेव्हन टू फिफ्टी किंवा नंबर वन मध्ये सुद्धा तुम्हाला माझ्या माझा विद्यार्थी कोलंबियाला गेला गेल्या वर्षी युनिव्हर्सिटी ऑफ शिकागोला गेला पण त्यांनी दे हॅव दंदर थिंग राईट इतकं म्हणजे क्यू एस रँकिंग आणि दुसरं एक महत्वाचं उत्पन्नाची मर्यादा आहे आठ लाख आठ लाख रुपये त्याच्यावर उत्पन्नाची मर्यादा आहे पण तुमची कंडिशन कदाचित वडील काम करत असतील आई नसेल काम करत असेल यू कॅन पर्सनली कमेंट डिस्कस विथ दिस आय कॅन टेल यू दिसतो याच्या पलीकडे काही वाटत नाही थँक्यू आणि आणखी एक सांगतात ते लास्ट परत या म्हणून सांगतात तिथे एक आहे परत त्या घाबरायचं काय कारण नाही जेव्हा तुमचा कोर्स संपेल तेव्हा आपण परत यायच्या अगोदर ईमेल लिहायचे मी परत आलो म्हणजे ऑफिशियली तुम्ही परत आलो म्हणून सांगायचं आणि एक महिन्या झाल्यानंतर म्हटलं मी चाललो तुम्ही सांगितलं मी परत आलो ऑफिशियली तुम्हाला नोटिफिकेशन दिलं होतं आजपर्यंत मी गेले तेहतीस वर्ष या फील्डमध्ये आहे माझा एकही विद्यार्थी परत आला आला तर एक आला तो फक्त रिटायर होऊन परत आला He has told you about uh, free education in Italy. Now, this is something which has nothing to do with government of India, government of Maharashtra or anything. It has nothing to do with uh, any caste, creed, religion, nothing. It is provided by government of Italy. The scholarships are provided, free education is provided by government of Italy. So, uh, there is no difficulty in getting that and there is no cap on numbers also. They will give as many uh colleges as possible as as many enrollments as possible uh, once you get the admission see for admission you should have more, minimum 60% mark once you get the admission the scholarship is done no problem <laughs> it is from it is yeah it is because that is the best solution For other countries, you will have free education to the extent of only tuition fee. But for living expenses, either you will have to work part-time or you will have to take money from home. But here, uh, the scholarship is provided by Italian government and you can also work part-time and earn money and save money. But then the priority, as we always tell the students, is academic. You are going for study. There is no compulsion to work part-time. So don't waste your money or energy or time on uh, part-time working. Just focus on academics because all your expenses have been covered. Right? So that is how it is. It's a very easy process. Very, very easy process. And uh, it can be done. It is not known to people. And uh, <clears throat> the students have a lot of reservations also. Why it leaks? It is not so good. I mean, my counter question to them is, where are you now to say that Italy is not good? Right? If you say this particular university is not good, I ask them, where are you now? Where are you studying now? What is the ranking of your university? Right? If you are going from a place to a different place which is on a higher, rank, higher level, obviously you are making progress. And from there on, you, you build your career. You can remain in Europe, you can go to US, you can go to any corner of the world. You can get very good opportunities, very good job prospects. But then, obviously, you will have to strive. Nobody is going to give you on platter. Right? 
there also struggle is there there also uh, challenges are there and you will have to meet those challenges sir Dr. R.P. Borkar to please address the audience. First year student, uh, Sivaj Ankari, and uh, my dear student. Uh, today, uh, four speakers or five speakers were there. The first one is uh, Dr. Mahendra Kuri, and he is an office bearer of uh, Institute of Engineers, uh, Nagpur chapter. He was earlier a secretary of IE chapter, and now he is a regular member. And uh, therefore, he was uh, called here, and he is a very popular uh, faculty at Ramdev Baba University. So officially, he has declared that Instead of Indian chapters, we launch them. So I think let us give a one more big hand to the speaker. Thank you, uh, Dr. Mangalakuli. Uh, another watch we were interacting with NADC. Okay, uh, the enterprise or uh, the Ministry of Defence, and uh, this program or the PGDM. They are going to launch 2324. Up to tomorrow, you know, my idea is that I am having one PGDA program or MBA program is there, but this program is little bit different and lot of job potential in the different sector. And therefore, they were called here and uh, you have seen the video, okay? And uh, I think job is guaranteed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. But uh, uh, seeing the uh, uh, the potential in the uh, defence sectors, the job job is guaranteed. And uh, I thanks uh, uh, the P uh, manager Mohan Agrawalji and uh, uh, Ahmadji for uh, delivering the nice presentation. And appeal to the students, not only for you, but your friends, your seniors. Uh, you just address that such a program is launched by any DC government of India. Okay, some alumni are there today. They are not present, but you have to convey them. See that this is one of the good opportunities. Another is engineer Hemant Sutheji and his son was here to. narrating and giving that a complete profile and at the time was very short and he has very very short speech was there related to the career counseling and the opportunity lot of things are there when you talk uh, in person or if you visit the office office is very near uh, to our place that what are the different universities uh, their requirements what are the scholarship available Oh, he was uh, telling you that no need of money, but only the character. <coughs> that you are cracking of English language, either TOEFL or IITS or the GRE, that is sufficient. Scholarship available. He has told you that how the government of Bharat is giving the scholarship: BSc, SC, OBC, and open. Earlier, open ceiling was twenty lakhs. They have reduced to eight lakhs. Maybe different government of uh, Maharashtra set up in there, but they have increased the OBC. Earlier it was not there, so increased to fifty. Even the scheduled cars, those who are choosing and having the rank from one to hundred, no money at all. It required no uh, ceiling of the parents' income. You are just twenty lakhs. You will get full money. He said, "Ceiling only after 100 US ranking, 101." Yes. So, जिसके पास एक से 100 US ranking की university है, और parents का income कितना भी है, they will get the full money. 
even government of india also giving the bonus so lot of opportunities are there are jago hai na jago are jagne ki zarurat hai aur sin saal ko hamesha question puchna chahiye aapne question nahi pucha hai na there is a email is there contact number is there you have to contact otherwise you ask your teacher to contact okay zaruri nahi hai ki you should go to other way but to your uh, contact somebody will come to uh, know that what are the different approaches available okay aisa nahi hai mr sahab ne pehle bataya ki you must choose your career jana hai ya aapko decide karna hai nobody is interested on you you are not your parents hai na koi parents bol raha hai ya phute sahab ne bola hai ki bahut kuch hai is tarah se mat karo choose your career but choose your career with a conscious mind so is a universal human values ka definition hai hai na ye kyun kar rahe hain hum log we want to be happy and happy it's a path of happiness ठीक है एंड अनादर एक्सलेंट अवर सीनियर इंजीनियर प्रदीप मिश्रा हु इज ए आई आई टी एस आई आई बॉम्बे प्रोडक्ट डिटेक्ट है ना हमारे में से बहुत सारे लोगों ने एक्सप्रेंट किया होगा है ना कि हम लोग जे ही क्रैक करेंगे जे ही क्रैक करेंगे बाद एडवांस करेंगे एंड देन विल गो टू आई आई टी बट नो वन कैन वेन टू दैट आई आई टी इज ए प्रोडक्ट फ्रॉम आई बॉम्बे तो डोंट गो बाय दिस वर्ड बट सी दैट द कमिटमेंट ऑफ the iit is towards the welfare of the people so whenever you need help they are always available with a free of cost i am telling you no charge will be levied because of any guidance or anything and therefore they are called here yahan pe commercial log aate nahi hai and i am not calling any commercial people and therefore this is a social commitment and you being a student of this college you must have a strong commitment towards the social and the economic upliftment so with this few words thanks all the panel okay navel ji is there as to thank navel also okay and uh, uh, madam uh, relative and kadin is there he is associate with mr sam sir so thank you him and santos also and all my dear students thank you very much thank you sir. thank you so much for your kind words Now I request Dr. S. K. Tekare to give vote of thanks. Thank you. Uh, dignitary from the dais, of the dais, all head, deans, teaching, non-teaching staff, and my dear student. I consider. It's a great privilege to propose a vote of thanks. Firstly, I sincerely thanks our guest, Deputy General Manager, NADP, then Hemant Sute Sir, Pradeep Meshram Sir, and Dr. Amit Sharma Sir for accepting our invitation and despite their busy schedule, has found time to grace the occasion. I also take the opportunity to express our sincere thanks. to our principal dr rp borkar sir to grace the occasion i would like to thanks to dr pm tajne madam dean student welfare for organizing such type of program for the students i am happy to express vote of thanks to the teaching non teaching and all the volunteers who made it a success finally i am thankful to all the participants for attending this program once again thank everyone thanks everyone have a nice day.